Good afternoon. We will be doing chapter 6, fallacies, part 3. You will understand the fallacy of composition. In the fallacy of composition, one wrongly proceeds from distributive use of a term to its collective use. The fallacy of composition is opposite to the fallacy of division. We already know that in the fallacy of division, we proceed from the collective use of term to its distributive use. But in the fallacy of composition, it is just the opposite. That is, we wrongly proceed from distributive use of term to its collective use. The term fallacy of composition also arises in two ways. First, from member to class. For instance, it would be fallacious to argue that because a child is physically weak, therefore the class of children is also physically weak. Let us understand the second way that is from part to whole. So what is true of the parts is said to be true of the whole. For instance, it would be fallacious to argue that because each brick as the part of the building is light in weight, therefore the building as a whole is also light in weight. Then we commit the fallacy of composition. What is true of the part of the building? That is, what is true of the bricks? That they are light in weight is said to be true of the whole building. Then we commit the fallacy of composition. Let us understand the definition of composition. Fallacy of composition is committed when it is wrongly argued that what is true of each member separately is also true of the class or what is true of each part singly is also true of the whole. Let us take examples. You know that orange juice is very tasty when you drink separately. Ice cream as a separate thing is very tasty and fish curry is also very tasty if eaten singly. But when we mix all the three ingredients, then the mixture is bound to be tasty. When we argue in this manner, then we commit the fallacy of composition. In this example, it is wrongly argued that what is true of each ingredient separately, that is, it is tasty, is also said to be true of the mixture collectively prepared with it. Now let us take the second example. Each chapter of this book is small. Therefore, this book is small. If we argue in this manner, then we commit the fallacy of composition. In this example, it is wrongly argued that what is true of each chapter as the part of the book, that is singly it is small, is said to be true of the whole book. We have understood the fallacy of composition. It is just opposite to the fallacy of division and it is committed in two ways that is from member to the class or from part to whole. Thank you.